Welcome to Instruments Direct. Today we're going to take a look at the Grayline DFM5 5.1 ultrasonic Doppler flow meter. Coming up next on Tech Review. Did you know that there are different types of clamp on ultrasonic flow meters? Well, you Pick the right guy to tell you about it. You see, back in 1977, my father and I started a company, Dynasonics, one of the first ultrasonic Doppler flow meter manufacturers in the United States. But that's a story in itself. I tell it during my speaking engagements. Today, we're going to review the Grayline DFM 5.1 dedicated clamp-on ultrasonic Doppler flow meter. Here we go with the Grayline DFM 5.1 ultrasonic Doppler clamp-on flow meter. I said the word Doppler. There are different types of ultrasonic flow meter uh, in the clamp-on world. There's ultrasonic Doppler and ultrasonic transit time. And the two have two separate applications. And a Doppler flow meter works completely different than an ultrasonic clamp-on flow meter. So what we'll do is we will talk about the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect is accredited to a guy by the name of Johann Christian Doppler, a 19th century Austrian physicist. And he wrote the paper, The Doppler Effect. And what we'll do is we'll apply it to a Doppler flow meter today, and then we'll digress here. But generically speaking, as you can see the picture on the right hand side, we have a sensor that's attached to the outside of the pipe, sending a sound beam, an ultrasonic sound beam into the pipe. So the way this works, the Doppler meter continuously transmits a high frequency sound that travels through the pipe wall and into the flowing liquid. Sound is reflected back to the sensor from the suspended solids or bubbles in the fluid. If the fluid is in motion, the echoes return at an altered frequency proportionate to flow velocity. The Doppler flow meter continuously measures its frequency shift to calculate flow. So if we know what the velocity is and we know what the area is, we can calculate volumetric flow or gallons per minute. But you heard that one secret word I said back there uh, on what it's reflected off of. It's reflected off of suspended solids or bubbles. So this is the big difference from an ultrasonic transit time, which requires no suspended solids. An ultrasonic Doppler flow meter must, must, must have suspended solids in the process looking for it to work. Uh, it basically, the spec is you need 70 parts per million of suspended, not dissolved solids, uh, 100 microns or larger. Uh, how does this work? Let's step back in a very basic example. I'm sure a few of us have gotten a uh, speeding ticket from the police radar gun. So he points the radar gun at your car, it sends out a frequency, bounces off your car and comes back. It tells you how fast your car is going. Well, guess what? If there's no car, there's no reflection back. Just like in an application for an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter, if there are no suspended solids inside the liquid, there's no reflection back, so you don't get a bad answer, you get no answer. So that's the difference between the two different technologies. So an ultrasonic Doppler is relegated to applications that have lots of stuff in the processed liquid. So heavy aerated liquid, and now that's a key point there. If you have over 30 pounds of pressure in the pipe, you don't have any air bubbles inside the pipe. So that's why introducing air to a, an application never really works there. If the liquid is open to atmosphere, that's a possibility, but not very commonplace. Uh, we're looking for slurry-like applications. Let's use the word maybe oatmeal or less than that, uh, domestic sewage or sludge. Lift stations are a very popular application for Doppler, secondly, because it's very forgiving with the straight run of pipe requirements, which a lift station commonly has no straight run of pipe. Force main influence. Uh, to uh, a facility, a wastewater treatment plant influence, dredging, mining, and I think you're kind of getting the drift 
and what applications you're best suited for an ultrasonic Doppler flow meter. So today we're looking at the Grayline DFM 5.1, which is a dedicated clamp-on ultrasonic Doppler flow meter, dedicated in the fact that it needs power. You can strap it on the pipe and put a line cord and walk around with it if you like, but basically it's designed for a specific application. Uh, it has a NEMA 4X enclosure. Uh, it has a strap-on transducer with cable, a keypad, a keypad system to program it for your specific application. And this particular brand has a unique feature, it's bi-directional on this Doppler flow meter. So the other part of the hardware is the transducer. This particular brand of ultrasonic Doppler has a single head transducer. Some other brands have dual heads there. This particular transducer has two crystals in the face of the transducer, which does the same thing as the dual head. And the difference being is that you have one set of transducers, which I actually find more successful on heavy slurry applications like a dredging application or a paper stock application. And it's adjustable for different pipe sizes, half inches and up. Let's look at the specifications for the DFM5. So flow range is basically uh, 0.1 to 40 feet per second. I wave a flag at that. We have get uncomfortable with Doppler applications that are less than a half a foot per second. With well, all brands across the board has been my experience there. Pipe sizes, half inch and larger, so basically any size pipe. It's a 2% device uh, of, of reading uh, if you meet the specifications for the applications. Of course, we said you need your suspended solids, not dissolved solids. It has a very nice display that will indicate flow rate in total and relay statistics. To program it, it has the buttons on the front keypad that you can program it for various applications. Power is traditionally an AC power device, 100 to 240 VAC, but you can also get 24 volt uh, VDC option. Outputs, 4 to 20 milliamp, it's a control relays, uh, and programmable flow alarm or proportional pulse. So you can paste the sampler if you'd like in addition to that. Closure, it's a NEMA 4X with a clear face, so you can put it outdoors, uh, a traditional municipal application. Uh, operating temperatures, minus 10 up to 140, uh, and the sensitivity, you have an adjustment to adjust the dampening on the transmitter. So all in all, very simple, basic device that meets most flow meter requirements. Of course, it has a strap on transducer, as we've said to you before. It's a single head transducer. Uh, traditionally comes with 20 foot of cable, but you can get longer cable if you need that. So it's designed pretty much for accidental submersions, you know, in that lift station or that metering pit that somebody forgot to put a sump pump in. It's designed to get accidental, but it's not designed to be installed by a scuba diver. How's that? You can get class one division two, but we need to take a look at some of the options to make that applicable. Temperature sensors up to 300 degrees F. So some of the options that you can have with this, as we just mentioned before, it is intrinsically safe providing you select that option. So you can have an intrinsically safe transducer with a barrier, which means you can put the transducer in the hazardous environment and put the transmitter in the safe environment. So some of your municipal applications are becoming intrinsically safe or explosion proof. So you can put the transducer in the metering pit and you can put the transmitter out of the pit in the safe environment uh, to meet those requirements. If you had a petrochemical application or a drilling application that you needed to have explosion proof rating, they do also offer a NEMA 7 explosion proof container which is basically a bomb-proof container that you can keep the transmitter and the transducer in the hazardous environment. Uh, for the cold applications, it does have a heater that you can add to the device. Uh, and then it also, as I said, you can have uh, optional DC power. I said 24 volts, I corrected. It's actually 9 to 32 volts DC. Then it has a really nice data logger function. You can log up to 2 million points uh, and you output with Windows using a software or USB. And pretty user-friendly to basically take a USB drive, you plug it into this dongle cable, and it dumps your data basically onto the flash drive. And then you go from that flash drive, you use the Grayline Logger software, and upload the flash drive using the software, and you have all your statistics. 
As far as programming the meter, uh, it's a Doppler and not a transit time, so it has very few questions to be asked to program the device. So it's very intuitive. Uh, you just go through the menu, but basically you're going to program it for the engineering units that you want to look at, English and uh, GPM. You're going to put in the pipe internal diameter. It doesn't care what the pipe material is. It doesn't care what the pipe OD is. Uh, and then you can also have the ability to scale the 4 to 20 and any special option. So a no-brainer, fall out of bed easy to program this Doppler flow meter and any other Doppler flow meter. The transducer, to install a Doppler transducer is uh, very forgiving. So basically you determine your straight uh, run of pipe. Again, uh, it requests in the manual for the 10 to 15 pipe diameters, but if you get into a lift station application, you don't have it. And it works very well with the less than perfect straight run of pipe requirement. In fact, if you have no suspended solids, the best thing to do is to put it near a pump discharge to pick up turbulence from the pump discharge to get a reading with this type of device there. The accuracies may not be optimum, but you're making a device work where it normally other devices wouldn't work at all. So to prepare the pipe, you just wipe off any loose material on the pipe. You don't have to take a grinder to the pipe surface itself. Uh, this particular transducer has a, it comes with a, uh, a pipe mounting uh, clip, if you would, uh, a little stirrup there that you can strap that on the pipe and slide the transducer in there. And if you lose this fancy little clip, a hose clamp will work too. So it is not critical to the installation of the transducer. So you apply your acoustic couplet, slab it to the pipe, crank it down, and you're in business. If you have the choice, the best place to install this is not at 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock, but anything on the side to get the average uh, solid content inside the pipe. So once you do all that, you get the meter fired up, the meter will then be indicating in your flow rate and your total and transmitting your output back to your recorder or your control room there. This technology, of course, it's dedicated so it's available for purchase, but we also have a rental program for this particular device as well as the portable Doppler devices. The Grayline DFM 5.1 is our go-to flow meter for applications with suspended solids like wastewater, sewage, lift stations, mining, dredging, and dewatering applications. It's available for purchase, and you can even rent it. Well, thank you for watching our program today. For more information, check out our show notes and links listed below. And if you like what you see, subscribe to our channel. As always, we appreciate any suggestions of technology that we should include in our tech review program. This has been Brent Baird for Instruments Direct. We'll see you next time.